أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليك يا إمام الصاحب الأسر والزمان My dearest brothers, sisters and highly respected elders for the final time this Ramadan السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to our final session and our final gathering on the mystics of the prayer with Sayyid Muhammad Hashimi. I would like to, just before we get started, thank you all for joining us on this journey. And I won't take too much of your time so that we can get straight into the question and answers. Whatever questions you guys may have, you guys can type it in or you, you can request to talk if you'd like. And you can voice your question to the Sayyid himself. And with that, Assalamu alaikum Sayyidna. Would you like to get started then? Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A'udhu billah min ash-shaytan al-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina wa nabiyyina Muhammadin wa alihi al-tahirin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters, okay, I'm at your service. How are you doing, Sayyidna? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah. Is your Eid to tomorrow or Friday? It's uh, it's not announced yet. It's not announced. You know, yes. They, they, they collect the information from Maghreb, you know. There are too many, you know, maybe hundreds of teams all around the country. They get the information and they send it to the office of Imam Khamenei or other Maraj. And it, it usually, you know... Three four hours after Maghrib, it will be announced. Sure. Okay, yeah, it's, it's the maybe same. tonight. Tonight is somehow, um, you know, there is a cloudy sky all over Iran, so maybe some we'll have some issues with the, you know, it's spotting the moon. But yeah. yes, and yeah, but it's the same here. We have first we have different councils because in Europe we have some people. Uh, determining European moon and then the UK moon and then Ireland yeah. moon. It's you know so many moons. Yes. Alhamdulillah. There is there there is a important discussion in in fiqh in jurisprudence that whether the the moon in all countries in all the world is you know uh, comes out the same. Yeah. It is called etahad al fiqh, one of the tough topics of fiqh. Some some scholars believe. Yes, so anywhere you could spot moon, so it is it for everyone everywhere in the world. Okay. Yes. Others say no. It is it, it can be different from, from you know the western hemisphere, yeah. northern, you know. Your local yeah. area in okay. Yes, yes. Right. So inshallah to get started and um, you guys can ask questions on if you want to ask questions on Eid, sure, moon sighting, sure. But the question answers tonight is for the mystics of the prayer. If you guys have any question, then Bismillah rahman uh, rahim Just to get us started, I had a question for you, Sayyidna. And that is, if you can touch briefly on the reality of sujood. Yeah. <laughs> you not get to touch on it yet, but inshallah, if you can enlighten us a little bit on this very... Yes amazing position yes very short okay because you told me before about this according to imam al khomeini he believes that the state of qiyam the state of qiyam is the state of tawheed al-af'ali as i said before and we, we discussed this tawheed al-af'ali the state of ruku' is the representation of tawheed al-sifati what does that mean? Tawheed al-Safati means that every attribute, every good characteristic that you see in the world, not the actions. Actions are, are the lowest level. Then we go to the attribute and characteristics, Sifat, and then we go to the uh, existence. Ruku is the state of manifesting and uh, showing the Tawheed al-Safati. It means that in Ruku, you must be mindful that every good thing in the world, not good actions, good attributes, like, like bravery, like truth, truthfulness, like these things, is all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a unity in his sifat, which is a tough discussion again. Wait, and the state, you, the state, yeah, can I, what? Can I, before you continue, can I ask you on this, um, just to clarify for myself and I suppose all yeah. the participants here, 
Tawheed Afali and Sifati. Yeah. And what af'ali, is Ali? The first one, Afali means every action in this world is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he's the source of every action. Okay. No one is independent in his actions. And, and I said before that here, this, this kind of Tawheed raises the question of Al Jabr al Ikhtiyar, the free will and determinism. Okay. The second step of Tawheed is, is a Tawheed of Sifati. It's not about actions. It's all about attributes and characteristics and features of different people. So if you see any beauty, any truth, any bravery, any, you know, uh, generosity in this world, this is all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the source of all the Sifat. So in Ruku, Imam al-Khomeini says that you need to be mindful of the at-tawheed al-sifat. But in sujood, we get to the highest levels of tawheed, the highest level of tawheed, which is at-tawheed al-dhati. What does at-tawheed al-dhati mean? Means, mean, at-tawheed al-dhati means that we need to understand that the only independent existence and being in this world is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all of us are all, as I said before, related, not just in af'al actions or in attributes. No, even in our existence, we are related and dependent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the highest level that ever a man can reach. Allah wa ta'ala tafsir mizan says, the first religion that brought the teaching of a tawheed of dhati with the highest uh, clarification was Islam. Okay, in uh, first volume of Tafsir al-Mizan, he says that. And it's, you know, as we said before, it's beyond the concepts and mind. Okay, so in a tawheed of dhati means that you need to understand that your existence the state of being is just from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you're all connected to Allah. You're not independent. And understanding this, this kind of knowledge and having and getting this kind of knowledge and feeling and witnessing that will happen in, in, ver, in the state of sujood. Yes. And it needs further discussions. You know, this was just a very brief uh, explanation of sajda. So in summary, we have stages of Tawheed. Tawheed yeah. in your actions, is that right? Yeah. Tawheed of yeah. attributes and characteristics and yeah. the of existence. Existence, yeah. yeah. And the third one is the, the most important one. And third one is the origin of others because the only independent being in this universe is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all the attributes go back to Allah, goes back to, go back to Allah. Every action can be referred to Allah because there is no other source, no other independent being in this world to be the source of other attributes or actions. Okay. Yes. Yes. So guys, if um, you guys have any questions, you can either text them or if you want to speak as well, you can request to turn on your mic. Otherwise, I will just keep on asking, saying that all of my... if you have no question, I will ask you questions. Each and every one of you, okay? Before you do that, I'll ask my questions. <laughs> okay. So before uh, people uh, can write or say their questions, mm -hmm. tonight, if, if, if this night is announced as the night of Eid, there mm -hmm. is a very valuable Salat for this night. A very valuable Salat by Amir al-Mu'mineen. And I recommend everyone, whoever can uh, pray this, you know, say this beautiful prayer and, and have this prayer, do that tonight or the next night, according to the annunciation of Eid in your uh, region. And that is from Amir al-Mu'mineen, two rak'ah. In the first rak'ah, there is one hamd and a thousand times of qul huwa allahu ahad. Don't be uh, horrified, okay, and ter terrified. You can do that while you're sitting. You don't need to be in the state of Qiyam. And being in the state of Qiyam is absolutely better and have uh, has more reward. But this is the first rakah. And the second rakah, you have one hamd and one tawheed. So you recite in 
collectively you recite 1001 Tawheed in the Salat. And after that, in sujood, you need to uh, say a hundred times, Atubu ilallah, and another dua, one line of dua. And inshallah, I can send to Sayyid Ahfad, and it is available, I think, in the Mafati. That is very, um, you know, highly recommended and very valuable from Amir al Mu'mineen. Do that, inshallah, if you could. And there is a dua, a famous dua of the night of Eid. You can uh, recite that dua as well. Okay. Exactly, Sayyidina. So, two rakahs, so, first rakah. There so is a, yes, yes, say it. Oh, no worries. I was just saying, no, two okay. rakahs. First rakat Surah Alhamd and 1000 yeah. Surah Tawheed. Yeah. Second rakat, one Alhamd and one time Surah Tawheed. And yeah. when do you say Atubu ilallah in sujood? Is it sujood? And after, before? yes, no, no, no. After you finished your salat, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, you go to sajda okay. and a hundred times Atubu ilallah, Atubu ilallah, Atubu ilallah, a hundred times. And after that, there is a short line of dua. Ya dal manni wal jood. I can read it now, but you, we need to. Write it in the group. Ya dal manni wal jood, ya dal manni wa tal, ya Mustafa, ya Mustafi, ya Muhammadin, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi, salli ala Muhammadin wa alihi, waf'al bi kada wa kada. And uh, instead of saying waf'al bi kada wa kada, you need to say your supplications, your hajat, what you want from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is a very important uh, salat for the, the, the night of it. Okay. What does this mean? Atubu ila Allah. Atubu ila Allah, it means I return to Allah. Okay. This is a way of repentance. Okay. Atubu means I do, Atubu means I do tawbah. Atubu is derived from tawbah. Because we hear this a lot. Astaghfirullah Rabbi wa atubu ilai. Yes, of course, yeah. Wa atubu ilai. Yes. Here, just wa atubu ilai. Mm -hmm. You don't need to say astaghfirullah. Just wa atubu. So, there is a question from... Uh, it's like a yes, direct message for me. Uh, uh, our brother, I think our brother, yes, said that you mentioned the different stages of intention and you ended it at the annihilation of the self. How can one completely annihilate the I in their lives? Very Look, brothers and sisters, uh, this annihilation, first of all, it, it doesn't mean that you need to kill yourself or kill you by self. I mean, the nafs. We need, this is the real meaning of annihilating I. You need, firstly, to understand and then to witness that you are fully connected to Allah. So you are not independent. Because this is a very controversial discussion there about al-wahdatul wujud, the tashkikul wujud. I'm not going to get into those discussions because, you know, there are too many thoughts here. Yes, we may be subjected to takfir, yes. But just for that, but for doing that, to be in the state of uh, feeling and witnessing that we are all connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the first thing is to know this, to understand this. And this was the thing that we talked about under the name of introduction to Islamic worldview and the discussion of tawheed. We said that, first of all, we need to understand that we are fully connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we are not independent in any ways. There is no independence for us. And after that, by doing al-muraqib, we need to gradually, firstly, leave the worldly desires. Those are prohibited. And we need to... Uh, remove the hubb dunya the love of dunya in our hearts, and then we need to cross the this uh, kind of knowledge that we have in our minds. And I'm not going to talk about that. I know our brother asked me this question, but let me because you know I've got no problem to say uh, you know to 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 explain that. But I told. Sayyid Ahfad in one uh, conversation we had that we need to gradually under understand these things, you know, one by one. Just very short, if we go in the process of al muraqaba and in the same time we are observing this knowledge of 
independence of Allah and what? And what we think about ourselves as the dependent beings. And if we just reflect on this, reflect, reflect, in our salat, in our fasting, in our daily life, in all of our actions, like what we said in Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, gradually it happens. We can, you know, slowly, slowly feel that this universe is really just from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all of these things that we are, you know, watching now and we are seeing now, is all connected to Allah. They are not independent. They are just a manifestation. It's just a veil, you know, before our eyes. The reality is just Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So going through that process of al-muraqabah, and before that, observing that knowledge and studying more, we need to study more, inshallah, will help us to uh, feel, not just understand, to feel and witness the this this kind of relation and relationship and connection that we have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another question, uh, these are just direct questions. I think you can see these questions. Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Yes. From other, uh, I think one of our sisters. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallah said, in one of the lectures, it was mentioned that you need a teacher to make you understand Islam better. But unfortunately, if one is unable to find any, then how can one grasp more knowledge and ascend ourselves? One should just continue reading, learn strategy for now. First of all, I'm not a good teacher. I'm not a teacher at all. But Alhamdulillah, you had said Haida hey, in Friday Night Circle and other gatherings for this, um, uh, you know, these days and months before. Okay. So, teacher, yes, sometimes. You find a teacher, a very low level teacher like me. This is the first level of blessing. Okay. We need to uh, use that, take this advantage. Yes, there was some Sayyid Hashimi, you know, like you English people say, out of blue, we found him. Okay. And we had some discussions. This is the first step. Because, Alhamdulillah, I, I, I really believe in that, that you had done something before. So this sessions exist now. But you need to do that. This is the first step. The second step that you need to have a constant and permanent relation with the scholars. Like what you have now with Brother Sayyid Hayden. Or I'm not a scholar at all, but the, the somehow relation that you have now with me. These can build the first levels of your Islamic worldview. And brothers and sisters, by Allah, many people in Iran and Islamic countries, they don't have these things. Even in Islamic countries, they are deprived. They don't have all of them. Those people don't, all of them don't have the Sayyid Ahfa to organize this kind of sessions. Okay. I'm serious. So this is the first level. The second is we need to... Uh, by those teachers, find the way of understanding the teachings of the prominent scholars. These four, at first, Imam Al Khomeini, Allama Tawa Tabai, Shahid Mutahari, Imam Khamenei. And I can def and I can defy anyone when it comes to talking about the prominent scholars of Islam on this on these four scholars. And how that can happen after, you know, teaching, like we have an introduction in Islamic worldview, we discussed, I think, more than 30 or 40 topics of Shaykh Mutahari. So after that, you had to have done a very, you know, long research and a study after that. Don't stick just with, just with this one hour sessions and classes. This is not enough. This is not enough. You need to study and study and study and study. And this can lead you to the real and true understanding of Islam. And I, I, I tell you, whenever you ask any, you need any help, you can tell me. I said, I'm a very low level scholar here. I'm not an, even a scholar, okay, real scholar. But I know something just because I read those things before you. Inshallah, I can help you. And, and this is my promise, okay? I can help you, inshallah, on that. 
The next question, your lectures, of course, not accidentally, alhamdulillah, I was able to connect the dots and I could feel spiritual ascension, alhamdulillah, bil alamin. I feel science to alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, bil alamin. It was because of you, alhamdulillah, because of yourself, alhamdulillah. Okay, other questions. Is this the real name of Sayyid Haider there? Or it's another Sayyid Haider? Huh? We do have some information. We actually Sayyid Ahfad. Uh, you have too many Sayyid Haiders, yeah? <laughs> we might have a surprise by Sayyid Haider. Inshallah, take one more question and I'll, I'll come Okay, no problem. We'll come to say Other questions. I'm, I'm, inshallah, I, I will take other questions. Yes, if other brothers and sisters have any questions, I'm here, inshallah. Um, if there's no questions coming in yet, just to ask another question to... Yes, another question. Even if the person is female, can she share, keep contact with the male scholars and buy, read, and learn? I meant reading books of Imam Khomeini and all you mentioned too. For females, you know, um, there are some, you know, first of all, first of all, before we do anything, in understanding Islam, we need to first of all observe the, the laws of Islam. First of all, first of all, very frank and straight. And regarding that, I think, yes, it is possible by, you know, you know, gathering like this, you know, for females, like, I think this, this kind of, uh, this, this way would be better. Like, our sisters can form groups, groups of studying, groups of understanding Islam. And in those groups, they can invite in those groups, like WhatsApp groups or Facebook groups, I don't know, whatever. They can invite like uh, scholars that they trust and inshallah, they can help them. Yes, it's, it's okay, no problem. They can do that. And yes, as you said, read and learn. Yes, the, the, the works of Imam Khomeini and others I mentioned, that would be great if you do that, inshallah. Is there any online classes on Tafsir al-Mizan since we need a teacher for that first seven volumes? Yes, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Good memory, alhamdulillah. I mentioned the first seven volumes. I don't think so. There is no online Farsi classes for Al-Mizan as <laughs> even Farsi, not talk about English. No, there is no, I, 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 I'm not aware of any Tafsir al-Mizan classes, you know, as far as I know, yes. There but is, you can show. There's also, of course, yes. no translation for the complete Tafsir al-Mizan. Only yes. part of it has been translated. On, only how many volumes? I think 12 or 13 volumes, but... That, that would be good, yes, no problem. Because many of the great teachings of Allah Tawatawai all the 20 volumes are very valuable. But as I said, the first seven or first six, you know, is filled with the, you know, new teachings, unheard of teachings. Yes. Inshallah, if, and I'll, I think, I think, uh, be, I think maybe last year or two or three months ago, I told Sayyid I thought that we can have uh, like this, kind of sessions of Tafsir al-Mizan. Inshallah, if we could do that here, inshallah, we can continue with the Tafsir al-Mizan. And if you could find any other online classes with a person and a scholar who is really familiar with Allah Matabatabai, not just with Quranic aspect of Allah Matabatabai, but as well with the philosophical aspect of Allah Matabatabai, uh, Irfani aspect of Allah Matabatabai, you know, Allah Matabatabai is a, he, he, he's a whole, Light of knowledge, okay? If you can find such, an, such a skull, inshallah, that would be very beneficial to join, uh, you know, the, the classes like that, like that. Yes, brother Asad, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, some say it. What would be you, great, your greatest advice regarding prayer when it comes to a revert? When it comes to revert, the first thing that I ask from a revert is to do dua for me, is the first thing that I ask. Because it's a Allah, just Allah knows how much this is valuable. We Muslims, we I, I'm I'm very uh, honest 
talking very honest now. We Muslims, we do not know what is Islam. We don't know what is the value of Islam. And unfortunately, we form close communities with our, you know, people of our nationality or our color, our background. And we sometimes, as I heard, sometimes, you know, you know, exclude any other person, even he, he or she is Muslim. Okay. So the first thing is any revert, I ask him to do the all. For, for her to do the offer for me. The next thing is, I think for a revert is, this is a very beautiful time. Salat is a very beautiful time. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with a great blessing. Even Muslims, born Muslims, haven't this blessing. Why? Because they're born Muslims. So they haven't ever felt the, this, this feeling of trans, transition this feeling of revert. So that feeling of light, of, of kindness, of a spirituality, you know, at the first time that someone converts to Islam, that is a great lantern of guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we need to hold on to that. If I'm a revert, we need to hold on to that. And by that, I always remind the blessings of Allah. So I think Reminding and being mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a revert somehow is, you know, easier than a born Muslim. Yes. Don't forget to do da'a for us. Okay. In short, can you explain what one should feel during ruku? First of all, during ruku, as I said, you know, this is for the all actions of the prayer. We need to be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are bowing down, you are doing ruku for who? For the greatest being of the universe. And I mentioned from Imam al Khomeini that in ruku we need to be mindful that every beauty, every good attribute, every good characteristic in this world is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So no one has a real characteristic or a real beauty. This is just from Allah. Yes. That will be great if we sorry uh, if we can have at least classes like this inshallah yeah, inshallah bring to the tafsir classes and our boss is sayyid ahfad yes. <laughs> and he is so busy may allah help him inshallah with his works alhamdulillah i but... really love sayyid ahfad i'm very serious because he alhamdulillah devoted himself alhamdulillah for the teachings of ahlul bayt I'm going and to leave Sayyid and I'm going to have to leave. I, I can say all the nights, all nights I do dua for Sayyid Ahfad. Okay. Personally for Sayyid, Sayyid, Sayyid Ahfad. Yes. How can female get into Hose? Like what factors matter, age, marriage, etc. Uh, our sister, uh, I can here I can refer to her. Uh, the wife of Sayyid Haider is a student in the Jama'at al-Zahra in Qom. I can, uh, she, I think she can inshallah answer this question. And if you if Sayyid Ahfad tells Sayyid Haider, I think she can answer to this question because she is accepted here now and studying here in Qom. So all the legal issues uh, you can uh, ask her. And yes, that is, a, that is an important question because we have many sisters here studying in halls of Qom. But please be aware and mindful that you know coming to Qom is not everything. It's not like, oh, I could enter the paradise. So everyone around me are the neighbors of the paradise. Everything is going you know, smoothly, no problem. No, sometimes that would be the, the, the beginning of many problems. But I can say for the person who is really steadfast in the way of Islam, it is very good to come to Qom and to be near Lady Masuma and to join the classes of Jama'at to Zahra. That would be very beneficial. And it, it would be like, it, it is like this for many sisters who are, starting at home, but many other sisters have issues and problems here because of, as I said, problems, you know, problems just arise. Yeah. Actually, yes. just as someone who visited home and I'm not Iranian, uh, it's definitely difficult, you know, it's like you said, it's not paradise. Yes, it's, yes. Um, physical challenges are definitely there. So, but that's in the path of Islam, there's always challenges, but that's the point. You're supposed to struggle. Yes, yes. But I, 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 I tell you that the struggles and problems are much less than the things that you're going to gain in Qom. Qom is 
really the source of knowledge of Ahlul Bayt for now. And if you are really, you know, a tough person, inshallah, you can use it because there are too many good scholars, Iranian, non-Iranians here, they can help you, inshallah. And if maybe the, the whole, we could bring the whole Friday night circuit to Qom one day and inshallah, that, we will hold the sessions in person. That will be problematic because once you once you go to Qom, your heart never leaves. Yeah. yeah. You all, we will all be stuck there. And, and coming to Qom and being a member of the Hoza is really a blessing of Allah. Ask that from Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even for the Iranians, it really, it was, for me, coming to Qom was somehow unusual, a miracle. My father is, an, is a scholar, a famous scholar in one of the cities in Iran. But I didn't, at first I didn't come to Qom. I entered the university, I studied the mechanical mechanical engineering, yes, before I entered the Hose. But something happened that even until now I cannot explain. Not something spiritual, I'm not talking about those things. No, something you know in the daily life happened and alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah changed my path. Alhamdulillah. I have kept you in my thank you, brother Asad. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. May Allah Help you and may Allah put me with you, inshallah, in the hereafter. Inshallah. So, why do we pray on a sajda and why is qibla important? And sajda, as I said, is the manifestation of the highest levels of obedience to Allah. So, you're from clay and you're going to clay and you put your uh, forehead, yes, on clay. Okay. And why is Qibla important? Because in Islam, the unity and the gathering and society of Muslimin is very important in Islam. Maybe more important than many of the individual actions, as I said, in the, those sessions of uh, prophethood in Islam, as I remember. So Qibla unites all the Muslimin. Now, a Christian, a Jew, a Jewish, even an atheist, when they see a Muslim, a spot a Muslim, with the same, you know, uh, actions of praying, with the same words of supplication, with the same direction to pray, they all say that, yeah, that they are Muslims. And this unites us, unfortunately, unfortunately, sadly, because of the issues that happened after Rasulullah, this unity, you know, fell apart, unfortunately. But we need to reform this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the al-jama'ah and the gathering of Muslimin is so important for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why we have that in the appearance, in our lifestyle. There are too many things in, you know, in correspondent and, and, and similar to each other. This is why. And the second reason is Qibla is not just a place. It's not just an X, Y, and Z on the map. No. Qibla the place of the Kaaba has some realities. Again, this world is not just a physical world. Like the, the uh, Wadi al-Salam. You may have visited Wadi al-Salam in Najaf. That cemetery has a reality. So some scholars would recommend their students to go there for some special uh, supplications. Those supplications wouldn't work anywhere else. But in Ver, in Wadi as Salam. So Qibla has a reality in this world. Okay. Um, say, okay. Say, well. We have a question here. And yes, uh, there, is, there is a question here, but I'm not going to uh, read it loudly. Okay, okay. Inshallah, inshallah, inshallah. Am I telling the person who sent me this question and told me to say this silently? Insha'Allah, Allah will help you, I'm sure. Allah will help you. And this, this thing that you made, it might be some harder and greater than a river to most of And insha'Allah, you will be helped by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And any help that you need regarding the uh, theology or things like that, insha'Allah, I will be at your service. Our brother, Greg, yes, I think... I saw this brother in Qom. I think he lives in Qom, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, 
He says that salamu alaikum alaikum salam. If you have any question about the studying your poem, yes, uh, he's, he's answering you very good, very good. Yes, yes, brother Greg is answering you. Alhamdulillah. He, because, yeah, very good. Alhamdulillah. Salam alaikum. Said, can you please talk something about Riyadh? Because it's really challenging to practice things with pure intention. MashaAllah, very good question. Regarding Riyadh, you don't need to do a hard job. Just, just that. Remind Allah, and it's not just a stereotype of a statement, okay? Reminding Allah is what? Why, why I do Riyadh? Why I do show off? Why? Because I expect something from others. Sometimes respect, sometimes money, sometimes a position in job, sometimes the, the love, yes? The mercy of others. This is why I do Riyadh, yes? So when you are standing before Allah, who is the source of love and kindness and compassion and wealth and life and power and knowledge and everything, where are you going? When you have 10 billions of dollars in one box and one dollar in another box, do you go to the second box? The entire world will mock you, will make fun of you if you do so if you go to the second box in one dollar you have 10 billion dollars there so other persons they are not even that one dollar because of our experience sometimes we did ria for others respect but we couldn't receive the respect we did ria for money but we didn't receive money yes so sometimes we uh, abandon the source of wealth and kindness of love for nothing. This is the first thing. The second thing, the modesty before Allah. How can I go sideways, go there, go, go another direction when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is really in front of me, is looking at me. We wouldn't do that with our parents. We wouldn't do that with our teachers. The next recommendation is to do al muraqaba for Riyadh, as I said, to do the daily muraqaba. It will, inshallah, save us from al riyah We have some martyrs, you know, the, 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 the warriors in, in all the battles, they have some, uh, what is, was it called Sayyid Ahfad? The uh, identifications of them is written on that uh, metal thing. ID cards, like like I like a necklace or something like that. Yes, ID I cards. Yes, they have ID cards. During Iran Iraq war, some of the warriors would remove even the ID cards because they didn't want even they didn't want to be recognized even after the death. Look at the purity, purity. Look at the intention. These are our role models. Sayyid al-Shuhara. It is said that it is, it is either a poetry attributed to Imam al Hussein, like describing the situation of Imam al Hussein, or, or it is re, or is really from Imam al Hussein. In the final moments, he says, Oh Allah, I abandoned the entire world just for you, just because of your love. And I made my children orphans, I did this. He, he, he does not attribute this to Allah. So I can witness you. So I can see you. Imam al Hussein is our role model. Other people, brothers and sisters, yes, mu'mineen are valuable people. But in, compar in comparison with Allah, they are nothing. They are like voles and bricks. They're nothing. Mirza Jawad Maliki Tabizi says that they are like Jadar. Some walls, they can't do anything. They can't even protect themselves. How can they protect you? Okay. Salam alaikum. I have a, um, yes. have a big question, but just before we get on to that, we had another question okay. related to this question. Just um, very briefly, because can we you, do have- Can you bring Sayyid Hidar up? I was talking to him. I don't know if yeah. he wants to come on just yet, but maybe soon, inshallah, just before. Yeah, he has to. Sayyid, where are you? <laughs> Sayyid, 
Okay, Sayyidafa. Go ahead. So um, we have a lecture on this and we'll send it into the group chat again, inshallah. And this was the lecture on al muraqiba And so the question was, um, just briefly, can you explain the difference between al muraqiba muhasiba, musharita? Yes. Uh, as we discussed before, uh, uh, this process of al-muraqaba has some parts and these parts are according to the time of a day al-musharata is preconditioning it means that when I wake up in morning at the morning at the first moments of the day I say that I will not disobey Allah by any cost. I'm not going to do anything against the will of God, okay? Sometimes you need to specifically uh, make it clear which scene you are going to uh, protect yourself from. Sometimes my eyes are not in my control. I'm going to university. I live in the West. There is no hijab. There, there is no modesty like that so it's so hard to be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to protect your eyes oh Allah you are with me today guarantee me help me okay so this is al-musharata the best description of al-musharata is what we read in the letter of Allah Tabatabai. he said that he decides that he is not going to do anything that has no uh, benefits for the hereafter. So then you're going to keep this promise, this allegiance with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This keeping of this allegiance is called al muraqaba You observe yourself, you protect yourself. Muraqaba, muraqaba, muraqaba. Even now, we are in, in a session. Even now, it may happen. Disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, disobedience. And at night, before you go to bed, you do al-muhasaba. You account yourself. So I had a precondition. I had preconditionings. So I did this. I did this. I did this. This was wrong. This was right. Wrong. Right. Wrong. Right. For those things that you did wrong, you say astaghfirullah. Real astaghfirullah. It means that I, oh Allah, I'm returning to you. I'm repenting to you. I wasn't supposed to do that. And for those things that you have done right, you do what? Alhamdulillah, the real shukr. And if you do real shukr, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what? La in shakartum, la azidannakum. For tomorrow, Allah will give you more protection, more guarantee, more knowledge. This is a process of, it is, it is very, you know, it's not coming out of nowhere. Even if you are studying for your exams, you do this process. You say, okay, today I'm going to study for 10 hours. So I need to refrain from PS5, refrain from going out, refrain from this, that. And you really observe that. Successful people are those who, what? Do this al muraqaba And loser people are those who don't do this. Even in daily life, you see that. Okay, this is al muraqaba There so, are some al muataba and... Oh, wow. Um, yes, after that, more. we have al itab itab means to admonish yourself, criticize yourself. and But that could be, uh, uh, you know, the al muhasaba includes the al muataba somehow. It's al muataba to admonish yourself if you have done anything wrong. Yes. You want to tell us some of the extra M's? Yeah. Will you tell us now or not today? Shaykh Mutahari in some places says that after al muraqaba we have al muataba And another word, I, I can't remember that word. There are five M's, yes, there are another M. But those, those two other M's are, you know, uh, referred to al muhasaba It is not something separated from al muhasaba this is why you see that every every scholar when they talk about this process of al muraqaba they say, they say al musharata al muraqaba al muhasib. There's three major parts of this daily 
observation. Yes. Then inshallah, do you want to take that fifth question by one of the sisters, it seems? Yes, okay. Okay. But before you're reading, you're reading it in the messages? Yeah, it's just in the messages. You can before that, I think we I have some direct messages. Again, oh. how can we can I can I read an answer? Because I think they uh, sent it before the oh, uh, message yeah. that you're going to. Yes. yes. How can we, we recognize that Imam Mahdi is satisfied with us? This isn't a uh, Salah question. No, no, it's a very good question. No problem. It is, it doesn't need any spiritual, you know, vision. Just think about the obligations that you have. D have you done your Salah? First of all, first of all, Vajabat Muharramat. First of all, brothers and sisters, this is the base of everything. And then beyond Salat and Som and other uh, important Vajabat, you have other obligations. Like you had the obligation to help your brothers and sisters in Islam. You had obligation to help your community. You had obligation to remember Palestine and Yemen and Afghanistan. You had the obligation of what and that and this and that. And do muhasaba on yourself. Muhasaba is not just for a day. It can be for a year. It can be for a month. What have I done for those oppressed people in the universe? If I could do anything, just imagine that we could do anything. So first of all, we need to see how much we could fulfill our obligations. I will promise Then we need to look and we need to check our intentions on all those actions that is so important. If they are okay, if they are really, and it's not easy to understand that's okay. I have a narration from Rasulullah that he says that, that the shirk, the polytheism, the, the lowest level of polytheism, in the heart of a mu'min, a believer, is like an ant which is walking on a very you know tall, long cliff in a night without a moon. Can you spot that ant is walking on that cliff? No. On that stone, on that cliff? No, you cannot spot that. You'll never get to see that. That is the shirk in the heart of Mu'min. So how can, I, how can we spot that? How can we notice that with al muraqab That is the solution for everything. Yes. Other question... Sayyid Afar, yes, you can ask, I think. Yes, there is a uh, fiqh question. Yeah. Sayyid Afar, yeah. you, 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 I want to hear your voice, okay. Oh, I was going you to say, this maybe it's best if you um, hear it, but, uh, read it because it's fiqh and it's a little delicate, but sure, inshallah, I'll ask. So, assalamu alaikum, and she's talking to you. Yeah. I was in America when we started fasting on Tuesday. Uh, one day before this part of the world, when I traveled to on the 10th of Ramzan, when I reached here, it was the night of the 11th. We fasted on the 12th of Ramzan, Dubai. Today was my 30th fast. If it is the 30th of Ramzan tomorrow, what is the hukum for me? Should I fast? Oh, beautiful uh, question. <laughs> yes. Ramadan starts um, right now. Okay, yeah. I've, uh, just tell me who, who is your marriage, inshallah. I, I think that you need to fast tomorrow. Because your fast is uh, according to the place that you live. So for you, tomorrow is the month of Ramadan. Okay? You cannot do iftar tomorrow. But just for making sure, inshallah, I will uh, search again the Rasul, inshallah. If, it was, if, if the answer was different, I will uh, inform you, inshallah. So you need to fast if tomorrow is a day of Ramadan in Dubai. Yeah. Say Hida, there is another say the Ahfa, there is another uh, direct question. Let me does telling someone that this or that happened to me spiritually with pure intention, that is not for getting attention from the person. Is that considered as real? Not necessarily, but we don't need to do that. Except for trusted scholars or trusted people or some friends that they are in the path of a spirituality, okay? 
that would be okay. Look, brothers and sisters, Ria, Ria is not a description of action. This is a description of what? Of intention. So I can pray in front of millions of people without any Ria. I can recite loudly Quran without Ria. And I can recite Quran in front of just one person, with Riyah. So Riya can be defined by what? By intention. Look, what, look at your intention. If your intention is pure to say that, if you really, if, if the person did not give you the enough feedback or enough respect, okay, and you are still okay, I didn't tell you that so you can love me. If it's like that, inshallah, it's okay. It's no real. But the spiritual incidents for us, if happens, you know, feelings like that, we don't need to tell it to tell it tell everyone that we had this experience. Yes, sometimes we are in the gatherings of Imam Hussein, we were in Arbain, you're talking, you're encouraging others to go to Arbain to be with Imam Hussein. You say that in the Shrana Mirror moment, this happens for the, and you can say like that. This happens for the human being, not for me. This could happen for the... Be cautious on that. Okay, say that. There's another direct question. Sorry, see it. Oh, yes, you too. yes you, you asked this. Avasistani. Okay, inshallah. If it was different, it was if the answer was different, inshallah, I will inform you. But I, I, I think I, 99%, I think that you need to do fast tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, Sayyid Ahmad, I think it's the end of questions. You don't have one more private another, question. Another, another quick. Yeah, you have? Okay, you, you, you oh, no, no. go on with it. I don't have, I, don't have any. I, I have I have another, Derek, but you you ask uh, because this this just ha just uh, came to me. So no, you no, there's no ask question. questions. No, no questions here. No so. question, okay. Another okay. direct question, private question for me. I'm sorry, this is off topic, but... Hmm. I've got two questions to which leader.ir site doesn't reply. Can you please help? Uh, if you allow me to switch on my mic because I really want to know the answer. Okay. Who is this brother? Brother, brother the soldier. The, the soldier. Yeah, sure. Of Allah. <laughs> okay, Bismillah. Um, we requested you to be unmuted so you can, inshallah, speak up and ask. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Yes, Jazakallah for having this question on the session. Assalamu Yeah, actually, uh, I've took lead of Imam Khamenei, and there is a section that is the iftar section where we can send out questions. But um, there are the two questions which I asked repeatedly on this side. I changed the wordings and all, but then a display message comes which says no reply. Yeah. And I, uh, and if it's about some other topic, like they email us the answer easily, but uh, this is about the copyright and about driving a two wheeler for women actually. Driving what? Uh, you know, a scooty, a two, a two wheeler. Oh yes, two wheel. Okay, for for a yes. woman, you mean? You, you mean yes? Yes, actually, I wanted to buy a yes, scooty, yes but yes, someone, yes, a, a yes. local scholar here, told me that yeah. it's haram. So I started yeah. searching for it, and I somewhere saw a, pic, yeah. a newspaper cutting um, with the uh, fatwa of Imam Khamenei that it's haram. But then I, uh, for, for confirmation, I sent the question, but the reply doesn't come, and I don't know why does it happen. So. Yeah. Regarding the, the, the two-wheel uh, vehicle, you know that about the bicycle, mm -hmm. there is a discussion that it is forbidden for the, you know, and, and you know that we don't have any mention of bicycles in the narrations. This is haram prohibited because this is, this is an example of a tabarruj. Because tabarruj means to uh, posing, you showing up, showing yourself for a woman is haram in Islam. Because mm -hmm. of that, 
some of these scholars I'm writing, they say that the bicycle, because men can can see the body of, of woman on, on the bicycle like that, it is haram. But for the, I don't know about your, uh, like, and you know that there is no issue with the cars, okay, with car. So if the yes. thing that you're going to buy is like bicycle, for the you know it, it 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 shows the body of the female and things like that. It would go with the hokim of bicycle, and if it's not like that, it just ha has a seat for yourself, like and there is a steering wheel and things like that, and it's very normal and doesn't you know manifest more than when you walk. That would be okay. But inshallah, I try to ask this question too. I know that they haven't faced this question until now, but inshallah, I will try to ask this question too. But yes, as I said, this is bicycle and car. You know, we need to know which uh, vehicle this, this thing is similar to. Yeah. No, actually, the place where I live, the situation is really bad with public traffic. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. because and men to, and women have travel. to have this, yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. So, uh, and yes. yeah. And so, I wanted to know that if I, uh, I mean, okay. ride a scooty with a chadar on and a proper sure. covering. So, yes. I think I, 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 I don't really have a complete imagination of that vehicle. Okay, mm -hmm. but um, if it's like a car and you wear chadar, as you said, I think it it can be, okay, you know, because because bicycle has really a, you know. A vehicle that can reveal the body of the female. And regarding your first question about copyright, it's a very tough question even until now. The copyright, because like we are using many of the, in, especially in Iran, yes, we're using many of the softwares without any permission. And a, it, or I always believe it's no problem because this is a concentration for the sanctions they impose on us. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> use everything but the first rule is that you need to abide by the law of the country that you live in okay like you when you sell anything to others when you buy something okay you abide by mm -hmm. the law copyright is a logical uh, right for the people yes we have some scholars who really deny the right of copyright they say that this is not a logical right but as I, I know, Atullah Khamenei doesn't believe so. He believes that this is a logical right. So you need to abide by the law of the country you live in. And by uh, according to Atullah Makarim, it, it, is, uh, it is like that, yes. No, when we use the internet, I mean, we simply, you know, a Google search and use that image and it's displayed that the image may be subjected to copyright. So is it permissible Maybe, for us no, 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 maybe, no, no. It's just, okay. you don't need to focus on possibilities. No, you need to be sure. If you are sure, and they mention that it, the copyright is reserved 2020, okay? If, mm -hmm. if it's like that, yes, you don't need. According to the law of your country, if it is forbidden there, if it, if it is forbidden there to do so, you have to abide by the law. Yes, thank you, thank you. inshallah. Thank you very much. And inshallah, I think with that, we're going to have to conclude our question and answer session. Um, just before we wrap up for today, I'd like to invite Sayyid Heather Hassanayn, if he's still with us, um, to just come on to the spotlight and say it's long alaykum. Sayyid Heather just had a near death experience. So I would be. Please, if you <laughs> share the experience with us. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Happy to see you again, Sayyidi wa Mawlai. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa we both think because we live in the same city, we see each other a lot, but they have no idea yeah. that it's not the case. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, my dream is to see Sayyid in real life. Two, you know? two, two, two months, I haven't <laughs> visited Sayyid. Yeah. Yes, we didn't have Tawfiq to see you, but Sayyid, thank you so much for 
imparting your knowledge during these nights and you know and i'll say it won't say this but there were many many things and many plans and you know many many good actions that say it could have been doing during this time in Shah ramadan but you decided to take you know my responsibility and give this time to the brothers and sisters and really i thank you from the bottom of my heart say it. and you know i was taking part in the lecture secretly um, <laughs> and i benefited very much from the especially from the tafsir of surah alhamd it was incredible and was amazing alhamd so thank you so much say it really may allah bless you immensely and inshallah all of us whose salah is improved even a little bit all of its thawab and ajr is going to be for you, inshallah. Sure. <laughs> hey, this lecture series was your idea. Inshallah, yes. you will get all this ajr. And inshallah, inshallah. Like, you a complete recovery from your symptoms. I know you have recovered from fighting that deadly virus, but the symptoms are still lingering, <laughs> aren't they? Yes. Um, Alhamdulillah, I'm completely better. Just my hearing is a little bit affected, but it's not important. Alhamdulillah, everything else is gone, as Sayyid knows. And uh, Alhamdulillah, I really thank all the brothers and sisters, Brother Ahfad, and all, everyone else who was praying for me. And I know there were a lot of prayers for me there. Many people sent me messages, sent my wife messages, and I know in the mornings there was and also before every lecture. And Sayyid said to me as a joke, you know, they recited so much. Amma you do for yes. you, you'll go directly to heaven. So, yeah. <laughs> so I really it made me feel so loved, you know, by so many of my brothers and sisters. It really, really meant a lot to be in all of your prayers. And I really apologize if I made that that I made everyone so worried. Um there was nothing to worry about, but you know, I thank you so much, all of you, for so all your prayers much. and all your love. And, yeah. Thank you, Ahsan. Uh, I want you. to say that I want to say that Sayyid Sayyid Haider really is a true example of a person who can travel from Western countries to Qom and to be benefited from the teachings and the knowledge of Qom and to be really prepared for return and help uh, his brothers and sisters really i say that if you want to inshallah join the hosa really say haydar has done a great job alhamdulillah in qom i, doubt, say I, I in didn't expect no? you know it was a time say Ahfad. sorry yeah no no it was in london you had uh, a contact with the phone and it was somehow uncertain for him that he would even come to Qom. You know, I think it was six, seven years ago. Wow. Do, do you remember Sayyid? Yes. Yes, but yes. As, More as, as I like said to eight, the, nine years. Longer. Eight, nine years, yeah. Eight, nine years. And Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him this tawfiq and Alhamdulillah, he, he, he did the shukr in Qom. He did the shukr. And I say, if you're going to be like Sayyid Haydar in Qom, it is highly recommended. I ask you to join Jamaat al Mustafa, inshallah, and to go back to your countries. Inshallah. You know, I actually, the first time I met Sayyid Hayd Hassan, he was giving azan. And yes. uh, I, I beautiful gave, voice. Oh, beautiful voice. And you know, I met him and I didn't have the Sajdiga, the Muhar Turba, I didn't have it. And um, Sayyid Heather was giving azan, he, and he had one in his hand and he just gave it to me. He said, Go pray, you know, just go and pray. <laughs> And, and, just, and you know, say that thought. Yeah. You know that it, it was 12 years ago. 12 years ago. And I think it was 2008 or 9. Sayyid traveled with Al Asr. And they resided in the, uh, there is a facility near Jam Karan. I don't know if you have visited yes. uh, that building. Brother yes, with the Al Asr. Yeah. I was really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you know, yes, it was, it was yes. completely accidentally. It was, it was a com we don't believe in accident, but it was like an accident that we, I acquainted with Sayyid Haida. You know, it was a dialogue between we were with the students of the university. We, we brought them here for, you know, some classes and things like that. And Sayyid with his team was in the, that restaurant and Sayyid was eating his food and others eating. And they started asking questions from Sayyid, 
how is Islam in the verse? How what, what is going there and so on and so forth. And they used me as a translator and my English was not good and it's not good now, but in that time it was a disaster, okay? But I, I tried to uh, help them to have a conversation with Sayyid and then uh, Alhamdulillah we could have, you know, hours of conversation in that year, hours about many things. Wow. Wow. And that was Alhamdulillah the beginning of, of this blessing, I think, of this blessing, especially and firstly for me, and then for the other uh, brothers and sisters here. It was a blessing for me, Sayyid. I had, you know, I had so many questions as someone who just came from, you know, a Western country for the first time to Iran. I had so many questions. I was filled with questions. I can imagine. And, you know, Sayyid was really... Sayyid and I wasn't, really wasn't a Taliban that time. And he was able to help me. <laughs> Sorry, Sayyid. So don't trust those. I wasn't a Taliban that time. So don't trust those answers yeah, that I gave you for that time. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that's amazing. You know, Friday Night Circle itself has only gotten here because of Sayyid Heather. I remember I called him when the, co- the coronavirus, well, I have been in touch with Sayyid Heather. I was telling him that, you know, Sayyid, I think I'm going to start a gathering of just the Shia youths that are in Dublin and then slowly, slowly, and then COVID came. And then I called him. I was like, Sayyid, you know, we had so many brothers and sisters, but it's all over now. Uh, do you want to start something online? And Sayyid Heather was like, you know, uh, I, I've, I've never done it, but inshallah, let's do it. And we did it and it was really bad. Like the audio was so bad. The video was <laughs> terrible. It was a disaster, you know, no one even knew what was going on, but it was the beginning. And after that, it just, now subhanAllah, we're here. Alhamdulillah. It's just been Alhamdulillah. Un- unbelievable. Sayyid Heather introduced us to you, Sayyid Muhammad Hashmi. And it's just been growing ever since then. It's been really, really incredible. And it all started, you know, you said that Sayyid Heather Hasnain will go back to the West. To help the yeah. West, he's already yeah. helping the West from yes, saying, oh, of you know? yes, 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 absolutely, yes, no, not at all, yeah. not at all. This is all your kindness, and you know, when uh, people over there, the brothers and sisters, they see two people with turban, they think they're the same, you know. But I have to say, Sayyid Hoshimi, he's like you know my older brother, and he's like really my teacher. You shouldn't think that we are the same only because I'm also wearing a turban, you know. And I really I thank hope, a lot that I the hope we were, we were the same. During these nights. I, <laughs> okay. You know, in Farsi, they call someone like me, Juja. They call, you know, a baby. <laughs> Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. <laughs> Even if you're wearing this, the box, you're still the Juja. And Sayyid's Farsi is, is magnificent. <laughs> sometimes, really, it really shocks me sometimes. Uses the words that I know that many Iranians doesn't use. Wow. Don't use those words. Yes. Sayyid He's like, very yeah. Perfect. He's very yeah. Perfect, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. And Sayyid's English is incredible. We have to say that. We all, all, you know, we have Ijma on this issue, Sayyid. <laughs> everyone is picked up. Inshallah. As Ijma, your English is incredible. Thank you, for everyone, sure. for tolerating my English. I know it was hard to. No, it was very, very amazing. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. It was, an, it was another blessing of, because I didn't join any class ever. Never. You just. Yes. Wow. It was another blessing of this Sayyid Hayla Hassan. He helped me so much on this. Yeah. Yes, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And, I, and I want to tell brothers and sisters, please keep this gathering together. Be together. Don't abandon this. Don't, don't finish everything after the holy month of Ramadan. Allah knows how much barak and blessing is in this session. This is Majalis to Ahl al-Bayt. This is Majalis to Ahl al-Bayt, which in this majalis, the remembrance of Ahlul Bayt, the remembrance of Amir al-Mu'mineen could be, fi- could be f- f- found. And in here, you know, people can elevate. There are too many, you know, the blessings in our daily issues, financial issues, you know, educational issues. Allah knows he will help us with helping these gatherings. Some people would help these gatherings just for their issues and problems to be solved. They did never for this kind of gatherings. So inshallah, alhamdulillah, so we need to keep on this. Inshallah, Sayyid Hayyad Hassanayn, Sayyid Muhammad Hashmi, would you like to give your final points maybe and then inshallah we'll wrap it up. After yes, before that, that Sayyid Hayyad lost too many weight. I, I, yeah, I need to I, I need to take Sayyid Hayyad to some <laughs> pizza. Please, he doesn't please. eat pizza, yes. yes. He's very, he's in my heart. He, he, he doesn't heart. eat junk, junk food, yeah, okay. <laughs> 
always healthy food. And this is coronavirus for say the hey that. So please end this kind of <laughs> discussion, inshallah. I, I, I'm in Tehran now. When I, I'm back in Qom, I will take you to, inshallah, a restaurant to eat pizza, inshallah. Inshallah. Yes. That has more blessings. <laughs> so inshallah, are we okay to wrap up this incredible journey? Um, Brother Ahfad, I just wanted to mention one final point, if you allow me. Please. I know we're way over time, oh, and no, I apologize. No, no problem. Um, that is that for the brothers and sisters who took part in uh, mystics of the prayer um, you know I know we learned a lot we really learned a lot about the Salah and a lot of us feel that now it's end of Shah Ramadan and you know we've learned so much sometimes it feels overwhelming that there is so much information that we learned so many new things you know and um, again only the surface was just scratched not only, the, you know, even the surface couldn't scratch it. The Salah is something which, you know, one Shah Ramadan is not enough to speak about it. A hundred Shah Ramadan is not enough to speak about it. Mm. But what's important, and please say it, please correct me if I'm wrong, what's important for our elevation as human beings, it's, you know, you act on what you know. Sometimes you feel that, oh, you know, we couldn't finish or... I couldn't get as much information as I wanted or or you feel overwhelmed that there's so much. It's OK. You know, it's OK. You have five prayers a day and inshallah, prayer by prayer, you slowly but surely you're going to improve. What's important is whatever you learn, you do your. Okay. I think we lost Sayyid Heather for a little bit, but Sayyid, did he cut out for you? Yes, yes. yes. I can't hear Sayyid. But I think I know what he was going to say. That is, do your best. Yeah. And that's that's facts. Yeah. Do your best, inshallah. 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 Oh no. So Heather looks like he's not coming back. Yes. <laughs> oh, well, maybe Allah had decided that is enough for him and now he has to just go back to <laughs> Inshallah. Inshallah. First of all, I say congratulations because it is announced that uh, tomorrow is the Eid al Fitr in oh. Iran. It yeah. is announced now. So Barakallah uh, Fikum inshallah. That is a very important day tomorrow. Mirza Jawad Maliki Tabrizi says that tomorrow you need to mention and remind the Imam Sahib al Asri al Zaman because we were supposed to uh, have the eat prayer with the Imam, have him as our leader. So the absence of Imam must uh, attract all of our atten in, uh, attention tomorrow, inshallah. So I have no more words, just I do a dua for the reappearance of Imam Sahib al-Asr al-Zaman, but Sayyid Hidar is back, so he can finish uh, his words. I, I just say this dua, and I'm done, and I will, inshallah, be inshallah. listening to Sayyid Hidar. Allahumma salla ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma ajjil li waliyik al-faraj wal-afiyata wal-nasr. Waj'alna min khayra a'zanihi wa ansarih wal mustashhadina bayna yadayh muhammad muhammad wa ala al-tahar. Thank you, everyone, and please forgive me for any shortcoming or anything. Please do do all for me every day and night. Thank you. Say that. Say hey there. I'm listening. I love you. I mean, so just to conclude, I apologize for that connection problem. Um, just to conclude, there was a man, and Sayyid knows this better than me, um, called Karbala Kazim. He's so famous in Iran, you know. An old man, he couldn't even read or write, never went to any house or any university. He couldn't read or write. And only because of his whole life, he lived according to whatever he knew. He was practicing what he knew. He was having taqwa to the extent of his knowledge. And in one moment, he became, he memorized the Quran. In one moment, you know, he entered the shrine of one Imam Zadeh, one descendant of an Imam. 
you know, something takes place. He faints when he wakes up. He feels that the whole Quran is given to him. And this was a miracle that was recorded. Ayatollah Abu Rajarudi tested him. It's not just a story. You know, it's something that too many people have seen it. And, you know, they say when you would open a book, an Arabic book, Farsi book, any book, you know, he couldn't read. But wherever there was verse of Quran, he could say, this is from Quran. I can see this. And they would ask him, how do you know? He said, I see light there. Why is that? Because of what Ayatollah Bahjid says, Rahmatullah, what generations say, that if you act on what you know, Allah will teach you. What you do not know, Allah will help you go higher. So everything we learned, what's important is we act on it. We learned a lot, but now is the time to act. This year that we have till next Shah Ramadan, inshallah, let's try our best to act on everything we learned in, about the Salah, and if we do that with sincerity, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will certainly elevate us and grant us more knowledge and more elevation, inshallah. Inshallah, Rahman. Thank you so much, Sayyid Heather and Sayyid Muhammad Hashimi. And for the final time, we to conclude our gatherings um, this month of Ramadan on the mystics of the prayer. Alhamdulillah, we have come to the end of our session tonight and the end of our lecture series. And it was really incredible. I thank everybody, especially our scholars for taking out the time and giving back to us because they didn't have to do this, but they came with their time and effort and they came to help us. And like Sayyid, Sayyid Muhammad Hashimi said, tomorrow is the day where we remember the absence of our Imam. So I have nine small prayers that inshallah we can all say Amin to in our hearts. And with that, we will conclude. So Ya Allah, may you hasten the reappearance of the 12th Imam, the advent of the 12th Imam. May you accept the prayers of everyone, especially the prayers for the reappearance of the Imam. May you make all the preparations necessary for the arrival of our Imam, and may we be among those people who are considered as preparing for the Imam. Ya Allah, may you remove all the obstacles that are preventing the reappearance of our Imam. And may we be amongst those who are removing those obstacles, preventing the arrival of our Imam. Ya Allah, keep the hands of the oppressors away from all the believers, especially in Palestine and our dear Shia community in Afghanistan that were very, very brutally treated. Ya Allah, help us to spread justice and equality, establish peace, and tranquility, strengthen Islam and the Muslims, and finally, remove all the problems, especially the oppressors from this earth, and send us, our Imam, as a relief after our period of suffering. Ilahi Ameen. Wa sallallahumma ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa alaykum as-salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.